Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond. Welcoming you back to the world of Pokemon Delta Emerald. In the last episode, we got a Meteorite Shard. In this episode, we're going to get another Meteorite Shard because this game is just oh so riveting and full of diversity. Ah, uh, whatever, 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 whatever. We are going to get a new Meteorite Shard in a new location, so I guess it is somewhat different from the last one. Gonna go all the way over here. I prepared beforehand and reminded myself where Meteor Falls is. Hooray! Gonna go to Rustboro and head north. He has got to be quiet every single time because you do not interrupt the bird Pokemon when he flies away like that. I did not mean to walk into the Pokemon Center. Get on out of there. Get on our bike. And just head on up here to Meteor Falls, if we could find it. I also went ahead and got some repels off camera, so we could finally stop running into wild Pokemans. If I could find them, however, that's another story. Here we go. Use the super repel. And just keep on going. Uh, I believe it's somewhere around here. No, not around there. Go over this way. No, not here either. Apparently, I did not prepare enough for this because, wow. Uh, do I surf a little bit? Excuse me, I said surf a little bit. Waylord, you surf! Wow, this is the smallest stinking Waylord of all time. And on up here. And, well, here's a meteor hole. Something tells me that we are in Meteor Falls. It's just a hunch. And the sign tells me it is. Okay. And as for where we exactly need to go, I have no idea. But I guess we'll just make a way up here. I really like this music, though. It's very nice and calming and soothing. Uh, let's just go this away. Oh, we got an item. That's nice. I guess I've never gone through your Moonstone that can be used to evolve a Nidorina into a Nido Queen, a Nido Reno into Nido King. Clefairy into Clefable or Jigglypuff into Wigglytuff, if you decide to do so. Uh, let's see. I've been playing Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee just like everyone else has, of course. That's uh, the sort of the time we're recording this around December. Uh, I have not finished the... Uh, like, is it me or is that going to be like, a lot harder than I was expecting it to be? Because I was expecting it to be like super easy and handholdy, but I'm actually having a lot of trouble leveling up my Pokemon and stuff. Is it that the game is sort of meant to have a rotation team where like, I think the point of it is that they want you to be catching as many Pokemon as possible to level them up but like I kind of don't want to do that I kind of just sort of want to catch the ones I need and then have them level up through battles or through just catching them and then you get the experience for uh, catching them and whatnot but I just don't want to like spend a bajillion dollars on Pokeballs by and just catching the same Pokemon over and over and over again but I guess that's sort of how you play Pokemon Ghost that's sort of how it's done but I don't know what if I run out of money what do I do then I have no idea also, I have no idea where I am right now, so if I am not on the right path on the way to Steven, this is going to be really stinking unfortunate. Oh, I thought I would have to fight that trainer, but I guess not. When I was a wee tag, I believe there was someone copying me and shouting back, you lay who Okay. Oh, because it's an echo and stuff? Okay, I get it. A big old meteor hole right here. That's very cool. But uh, this isn't Meteor Falls anymore. We're outside of it, so I should go back in? I have no idea. Let's... Right around here real quick. Uh, not yet. Let's do... Can't even do that. Uh, I do not remember anything, apparently. Uh, trying to get my bearings straight. Uh, I sort of remember this area. Uh, thankfully we do have Rock Smash, so it doesn't lead to anything, though, so it's not necessary. This is where we, uh, do a certain thing in the post-game of Emerald. I can't really say what that is, though, because it's a spoiler. Uh, hopefully I can find my way around here sooner or later. Uh, if I need to go back in the meter falls, I'll just cut away. So, cutting away! And there was nothing there, so I guess the place I'm looking for is somewhere else around here. I guess on a different pathway. Uh, so let's go down these slopes, or down this little waterway. It looks really cool. I guess we could use Surf. That's always a good idea. And right on the world's smallest way, Lord, once again. Uh, there's an item over there. And hey, yeah, see, it's a good idea that I kept all these HM moves. I'm gonna use Waterfall now. Right up the waterfall. Very quick. And uh, there's probably a hidden item right around here. Is there? Is there a hidden item? Yes, there is a Great Ball. Not that I actually need it for anything, but whatever. Gonna jump in the water once again. Once again! 
and head up this second waterhole, not run into the water zoo bath from what that noise indicated. And another enemy. I gotta set up another repel. Okay, got another repel up. We could start heading up this way. I uh, presume the waterfall over there is where we need to go, but I'll just look around here a little bit before we head up there. Uh, got anything interesting here? I went back around here. What? Uh, I don't know how anything works. Pathways are confusing. Okay, I'll send this around. Just go up the waterfall. Want to make it boring like that? I heard a Clefairy. Uh, just get in that waterfall. Oh, I'm a whale. Look how happy I am. I was actually thinking about giving my Pokemon nicknames for this area, but I was like, eh, I don't like nicknames. Whatever. Just as like a little special thing, but nah. Min and Beyond Incorporated, we do not use nicknames. Uh, use another stinking repel. I do like that you get to just use it automatically, which is a very nice feature. Uh, I assume that cave is where we need to go. Of course, we need to like surf just to get on through one tile. Can't go up that waterfall because uh, the rocks are in the way, so we'll just head in here. And what do you know? It's more water. Uh, have we fought you before? We have not. So we got new trainers here. This is where we dragon trainers do our training with dragons. The champion even visits. Now do you see how special it is here? So I assume you're going to be a pretty difficult trainer. He's got a Flygon, a really strong Pokemon. What level is it going to be is my question. It is level 47. Okay, not too terrible. He's only, it's his only Pokemon as well, so it's not the worst thing to deal with. Dragon Rush, not Dragon Rage. Okay, so that actually it could do damage. Dragon Rage only does 40 damage. Trying to differentiate the two. Uh, good damage there, Waylord. I'm just going to do it one more time. We'll be good to go. Oh, you missed. That's always nice. And we are good. Hopefully it won't be too long getting through here. But, oh well. Good experience. And Swellager to level 57. Very nice. Oh, I didn't expect you to be so strong. Yeah, the trailer's got these fully drawn out character models now whenever you fight them super cool and stuff power of the future uh guess we're going down here didn't mean to but whatever uh, let's see what do we got in here we got a trainer we can fight did not want to i probably shouldn't keep whaler up for every single one of these fights but whatever my muscles are trying to tell me something they want me to battle you oh if your muscles want to battle me okay then they're so i like how she just has a flying kick and she's like flying into battle stuff battle girl tess Sent out Mian Chao. I like that it's not just Generation 3 Pokemon that we get to see new ones. So it's really cool that we get to see these guys beforehand, but I can't really talk about them all that much. But Mian Chao is one of my favorite Pokemon. I just love the design. love how purple. Of course, anything that's purple, I just absolutely love. And I'm going to go and Surf. Uh, Drain Punch will actually heal the the user if they don't have full HP. Uh, I'm going to use Waterfall real quick. As such, as you'll see right here. Now, thankfully, I didn't end up getting KO'd. Uh, wow, that's a lot of HP, because I guess Whaler has a lot of HP, so it regained a lot of HP, but just didn't seem like it. Uh, thankfully, we were able to finish it off. Get that experience. And Salabi to level 59, very nice. Tree go to level 61. And that's it. My muscles are crying. I just imagine, like, actual muscles. You're like, sob, sob, like tears are coming out of them. I guess that would be sweat when you think about it. No. Tree goes evolving. I wonder if I'll let him evolve in this new 3D environment. No. Uh, the joke gets kind of old after three Pokemon LPs, or I guess four if you count uh, Colosseum. Uh, where are we going now? There's a ladder over there. There's a trainer over there. It's interesting. I have no idea where to go. Uh, there's a ladder there as well, so I guess we just gotta go for it. He's got a dragon. I have nothing that really works well against dragons, so we'll just go with Salabi, I guess. Fight this guy. I'm not into this costume. I'm a dragon trainer, though, so I have to wear it. Because the game designers were too lazy to give us all individuals unique sprites. Uh, his name is Dre. Her, her. I actually remember when uh, making the finale video for uh, uh, Emerald, when giving like the credits of all the characters, when I credited uh, Drake, who was voiced by Alex Trode, um, I remember I, ac I accidentally named... Uh, wrote his name as Drayden instead of Drake, so I had to like re-render the entire video. Drayden is the name of a Dragon-type trainer in a future Pokemon game. And I was like, I got so sick and mad because like that always happens in every finale video. I either spell someone's name wrong, like 
in the finale of Earthbound, I spelled one person's name wrong in the credits by like one letter, and I had to re-render the entire video. It took like 24 hours. Like it delayed the entire finale by an extra day because of it. It was really annoying. Oh, whatever. Oh, that's a mis that's all a misunderstanding. I went through that fight without Mega Evolving. How nice. See, you don't need all that power to win fights. Sometimes you just need uh, your own natural born strength. Uh, we got two trainers right here, so a double battle is what we're getting into. Let's switch to, not item, switch to item in attack mode. Switch to Hariyama and Torkoal. And get things started. We've always battled our Pokemon against each other, so we're confident. It's been 50 years since we got married. Nothing can break our bonds of matrimony. It'd be funny if after this battle they're like, I want a divorce. Uh, old couple John and Jay. Uh, we got, oh hey, you also have a Hariyama. Hariyama and Medicham. Uh, two Pokemon that I've used before. Very, very cool. And I'm using one of them right now. Kind of wish we had Swellow, but oh well. Oh well, oh well. I could use Earthquake, but that would hurt Torkoal as well, so I'm not going to. Use Strength on Hariyama. And Torkoal use Sludge Bomb on Medicham. Uh, he's using Endure. That makes so if we were to beat it in one hit right now, it would survive with one HP, but I highly doubt we were actually going to do that, so not really all that important. Assurance. I would have used Assurance. I thought Assurance did damage. Sludge Bomb. Going to do not that much. Use Strength on Hariyama again. And Torkoal use Flame Wheel on Medicham. Use its Strength. I was just like... Doesn't sound very strong. Sounds kind of dorky and stuff, but whatever. Beat Hariyama. And Torkoal grew to level 57. And up next... Oh, no, he just not or acupuncture, whatever that said. Uh, evasiveness rose. Okay, that's what it's doing. Do that, and wow, that was a lot of stinking damage. Okay, stick to the fire attacks then. Uh, use strength, I guess it doesn't really matter. Just need to get one more hit in, and we'll be good to go. Oh, it's using recover. Uh, I see what this is gonna be all about. Just evading and recovering. Just keeping us here forever. But it doesn't matter because Torkoal took you out. <laughs> And we did it. Oh no, we lost, honey. Oh no, we lost, sweetie. Such riveting writing this game has. And I'm sorry I'm making fun of all the writing stuff. I did want to play the Delta episode, obviously, but like it's just I admit that the writing can be very ranges from corny to lackluster a lot of the time. Jeffrey, we have the meteorite shard. I just jacked it from this old lady in the cave right here. And I have come to understand many things, as I suspected might happen. Allow me to introduce you. The honorable lady you see before you is a descendant of the ancient Draconoids. Draco, Drac, Draco, oh no, I don't care. Yes, I'm one of the Draconoid people. One of those ancient folk tasked me with passing down the knowledge of Mega Evolution with the great lore of the Lord Rayquaza, who was the beginning of all and the beginning of my downfall of insanity. Oh, that was an annoying fight. Since long times of times long gone, I can't speak. Owen has repeatedly suffered great disasters. At times, the destruction took the form of a huge meteoroid, which fell upon our land from distant space. At other times, the primal reversions of our own super ancient Pokemon brought us to the brink of destruction. Each time, Lord Rayquaza has saved us from doom. The chosen lore keeper standing before a stone that chose, shone with a rainbow light offered up a wish to the Great One. And Lord Rayquaza's body was uh, fused with a brilliant light and transformed. It, in its transformed state, Rayquaza's power was more devastating than ever before, overcoming even the super ancient Pokemon with all of their primal power. A rainbow colored stone, an invocation from the Lore Keeper, and a Rayquaza unlike any ever seen. I see. It does resemble what we know of the process of Mega Evolution. Yes, it does indeed. A Pokémon, a person, a stone of power, the bonds that tie them all together. The transformation of the Pokémon that occurs as a result of this phenomenon was called Mega Evolution by later peoples. So the mechanism for Mega Evolution was discovered as a result of the first meeting between humanity and Rayquaza. Hmm, but I have one last question. That Lord Keeper you spoke of. 
The Lord Keeper is the one who has inherited the knowledge and the power to summon Lord Rayquaza when disaster impures the world. The true Lord Keeper of the current generation is the one called Zinnia. The disaster that now approaches our planet as it has twice before. Zinnia has been trying for some time to avert it in her own way. To draw Lord Rayquaza to our sphere, she joined a certain organization that sought to revive the super ancient Pokemon. She taught them the secrets needed to bring back these threats and summon the great dragon itself. And now it seems she travels the land scouring the world for keystones. So it was true. As I had suspected, that woman who appeared at the space center was one of the Draconoids. But I never dreamed she would be involved in the attempted revival of the super ancient Pokemon. In her in full knowledge of the power that held, fully understanding the terrible changes they would wreak upon our world. She still helped bring that situation about. Did she give a thought to the many people in Pokemon whose lives were put to grave risk by her actions? Could she accept the inevitable sacrifice of so many lives in order to protect the planet from the coming meteoroid? Balance must rule this world. History is doomed to repeat itself. While our people have overcome many disasters in the past, it was always through great, great sacrifice. Yet we have continued to struggle to persevere peace, to preserve peace for as many years as we can. That is how we have protected this world upon which we now live. People, Pokemon, all nature, and yes, even you. For you are not people or nature. You are an abomination with that stupid hat of yours. I do not know exactly what you plan to do. But do you believe that you are not sacrificing anything for your own protection? Zinnia will follow her convictions until the very end. Even knowing the sacrifices they, that they will require. Even if the sacrificial blade is leveled at her own heart. Is that right? I understand. Thank you for everything. What is this? This vague sense of apprehension. And my intuition has often proved true. I'm going back to Rustboro first. I have to get back to Devon. I know a lot of people have their gripes with Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but personally, I very much prefer this version over the original because with Generation 3 being my least favorite generation, or just uh, the Hoenn region being my least favorite, I feel like Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire just fixed a lot of things for me personally. It just made it a lot more enjoyable of an experience, and I was able to get through these games that I kind of went through begrudgingly before. So, I, I don't know, I guess it's a... A game for not for everyone but it was able to satisfy my own needs because I didn't quite enjoy Ruby and Sapphire as much as everyone else did and for those who enjoy those games then they're still there for you to play so it's not like this game's existence makes those games disappear from existence so all's good in the world just play whichever version suits best for you but yeah we got ourselves a bit more information as to what Zinnia's objective is and I guess we're just gonna continue on with our objective as well uh, though we weren't actually given any sort of information, usually it's just handed to us right away. I wasn't given any sort of special phone call, so I have no idea where I'm supposed to go. Oh, they actually expect me to do it on my own to figure things out? How could I possibly do such a thing? I uh, don't know, maybe when we get out of this cave, they'll give us an inconspicuous phone call of sorts. If I can find my way out of the cave, that is. I have no idea how to get to that Pokeball, but whatever. Uh, we're going to exit the cave. And just dawdle around until we find ourselves the next objective, I guess. Well, I guess Steven said he was going back to Devon Corp, so I guess we could take that as an indication that we would want to go there too. Head on inside. Ah, wah, wah, wah! What? Ouch. Ooh, you're that fantastic trainer who helped me before. Hello, yo, geek. Gotta help me, please! Whoa, you're the kid trainer I met before. Arr, you're getting in my way again. We gotta fight the Aqua Grunt from the beginning of the game. Please have the same 
uh, level Pokemon as you did before? Probably not. Team Uncle Grunt. He's got Mighty Anna, because of course he does. Oh, whatever. I guess it's somewhat different from a Poochiana, so you shouldn't be too upset. But we got Hariyama, who will make quick work of this thing. Use Vital Throw to get rid of it. Oh, you're going to use Takedown, because you're somewhat faster. Okay. Just making it a bit easier for us by giving us a little extra damage. And you're gone. Very good. This fainty damage looks so sad. It just, like, passes out. I was like, oh, I don't like that. Level 56 for Hariyama. And up next, he's going to send out Golbat. Uh, I'm going to switch to Swellow. And let's see what we can do with a flight on flight battle or something like that. Because we got no electric or ice type moves. Let's use Brave Bird. Now I'm free! Free falling! That doesn't really make sense, but whatever. Oh, I did KO it. Come on. Uh, using Haze. Uh, get all that uh, smoke up in there. Air Slash to finish it off. And we are good. And Waylord got a level up. Very nice. Team Walker Grunt is defeated. Yeah, another defeat. Grr, am I destined to lose to you all the time? Yes. Also, let me just say I'm very angry. What's wrong, Grunt? What? You again? Fine, sure, I know I can't win, but I'm going to challenge you for Matt. At least he admits that he won't win. But, uh, let me just say that I'm really mad that they changed the name of the Devon Goods to the Devon Parts in this game. And it made me really upset. Just like in seeing Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, they changed my favorite line in Pokemon history. The one where you meet your very first Team Rocket grunt, and he says, the way he introduces Team Rocket to you is just hilarious to me. He says, we Team Rocket are Pokemon gangsters. We strike fear with our strength. But in this version, they changed it to We Team Rocket are Pokemon Bandits. I'm like, that's not nearly as funny. Come on. Name it called Stinking Gangsters. was Stinking Hilarious. Uh, just like a lot of minor little things that they changed that like only a super duper nerd would be able to notice. And of course, I notice all of it. And I'm just like, oh, it bothers me. That's not exactly the same as before. And whatever. Just minor details that only I care about. Sound the retreat. It's only good sense to save your own hide for Matt's sake. And another one. I'm hungry, so I'm going back. <laughs> ah, well, my stomach's ready for battle, because I'm rumbling. Gotta find another trainer. Why don't I just give us, like, one rock, one Aqua Grunt with a bunch of Pokemon, but whatever. It's not like we even get to heal during these fights. So there's no real point in having them all separated, but just for comedy's sake, I guess. Because it's funny that we keep on fighting them. <laughs> I don't know. Use strength. I uh, hope that'll finish it off. And what the? Okay, that's kind of weird. I didn't remember doing that before. Using haze, not actually any actual damage. You are a flying type. You think you'd use the opportunity to do some good damage against me? But nope, apparently not. So now a little fart and a little uh bobble bobble, and down goes gold bat. Get experience, and up next is Sharpedo. Okay, so we're gonna switch to Shartrico or something. I don't know. So, uh, I saw Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse recently, and let me just say, it was phenomenal. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that, but it's so weird. Like, Kid Me was, or as I refer to as Kid Knight and Beyond, he was, like, so, so obsessed with Spider-Man back in the day. But, like, even when I was obsessed with it as a kid, I never watched the shows or read the comics or anything. I just collected the toys and stuff. I loved Spider-Man toys, and I just loved the character. I loved drawing him. I don't know, I was just always obsessed with this character, but, like, I really wish that I was into superheroes like that back in the day, but I just never really bothered all that much. But I'm really glad that they're... I'm so hungry. I never bother... I'm glad that they're still around today and that they can be part of my life and everyone else's life these days because they're very cool and stuff, and they mean a lot to a lot of people. I lost, like I figured. I'm going to get some food on the way back. Thank you, you helped me again. As my things, I'll give you another great ball. Oh, now is not the time for this. We got big trouble. Team Aqua stole the control device for the link cable that our company had been developing. It's a special tool called the Dimensional Shifter. The person who stole it was a huge man with bulging muscles. What shall I do? What should? What would I do? What shall I do? They must be headed for the Moss Deep Space Center. Of course they are. Steven must have gone ahead of the Space Center, but I'm worried. 
Well, I guess I know where we're going in the next episode. We're not going after a meteorite, though. We're going after the stuff that will be used for the meteorite. That was a sentence, right? I don't know. Meteorite? No. Next time on Pokemon Delta Emerald, we are going to save the universe. Maybe, possibly, I don't know. We're going to save something that will be used to save the universe, so... It's all going to work out in due time. In the end, we'll all be heroes if we just keep on trying. As a great man once said, the mask will fit eventually. It always does. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.